One of the more common questions that I get as a urologist and the director of the prostate clinic located here on the Gold Coast is why do I need to have a PSA test after I've had my prostate removed to treat my prostate cancer? If you're awaiting a radical prostatectomy or if you've just had a radical prostatectomy, then this video may be for you. As always, if you get benefit, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel or share the video with a friend. So if you have your prostate removed for cancer, many men question why on earth they need to continue having a PSA test. And this is for obvious reasons. We tell men before surgery that the prostate produces PSA. It's the cornerstone of how we screen or test for prostate cancer. The concept that many men have is that they have their prostate removed and therefore there should be no PSA production. And this is entirely correct. And the reason we do the PSA test really is as a quality assurance mechanism to make sure that that PSA is zero after treatment. If you'd like to be part of our growing community, please follow the link in the comment section down below and sign up to our free newsletter that comes out on a weekly basis, keeping you up to date with all aspects related to prostate health and various treatments that are available uh, for men. Now back to the video. Prior to surgery, there can be some ambiguity, and I know it is a hotly debated topic the, with regards to the utility of having a PSA test. One of the challenges that we face is in the pre-treatment uh, journey, PSA can be produced by a benign enlarged prostate, by prostate cancer, or a prostate that is irritated or inflamed for a particular reason. Following surgery, where there is no prostate, the PSA test should be zero. And if it's not, it tells us that we're dealing with recurrent cancer. And that specifically is why we do the PSA test ongoing following surgery. Now, depending who does your treatment and in which geographical location you may be, the timing of PSA tests following surgery will vary. Certainly at the prostate clinic, we do PSAs three monthly for the initial year following surgery, six monthly from year two to year five, and annually thereafter. As I've alluded to, if the PSA goes up, it is consistent with recurrent cancer. And what we then do is to try to work out if we think that recurrent cancer is in the area of where the prostate used to be, or if we think that could be further afield. In essence, that decision really guides future treatment uh, strategies, whether or not we elect to proceed down the pathway of salvage radiotherapy or we look for more potential systemic treatment. So if you have had surgery for prostate cancer, the things you need to be aware of are, firstly, it's imperative to continue to monitor your PSA so that we detect signs of change at an early, early uh, uh, time frame. For those men at the prostate clinic that are uh, managed more remotely, <clears throat> I give everyone the guidance that if their PSA ever gets to 0 0.05 after their surgery, they do need to return to the prostate clinic for evaluation and a discussion with regards what's going on. I encourage all men to be empowered with regards their own specific information and the things that you need to know about if you've had your prostate removed, or what's the Gleason score of your tumor? Was it contained? Had it breached through the shell of the prostate? Had it extended up to where we had cut to remove your prostate? Or was there extension into the seminal vesicle? All of these factors give us a better handle on the long-term probability of cure and can help guide us as to recommending future treatments should they be required. If you've got a comment or a question or if you've been through this journey, please, if you're prepared, share your story in the comment section down below. If you'd like to know more about prostate issues, please have a look at this video or alternatively this video here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.